And we are back to discuss The Last of Us, episode 4, 5, and 6. Preston, it's been a minute since we've done this, but I'm kind of glad that there's only nine episodes, so we can do it in like three three episodes at a time. How are you, buddy? It's been a minute. You're, oh, you're, you're, saying, you're saying if there was ten, then it, it would, wouldn't divide properly? Like, <laughs> that's it? We that's, would do three, 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 and then one final big one for ten. And... Uh, <laughs> everything's but, about division like okay all right you hate it you hate it like a seven a seven episode season would be horrible because you couldn't divide it anyway <laughs> uh okay all right so so um yeah last of us the the next the next episodes four five and six we're, we're gonna be talking about mm-hmm. and um yeah so how are you liking the middle part of the season versus the, the the early part of the season. I'm actually enjoying it quite a bit. I was worried after the first few episodes that it was a fluke and it was going to go downhill from there, but no, it's it's been consistently good. And uh, I've said it before, I'll say it again, I think this is, so far, one of the best video game adaptations we've ever gotten. Yeah. I know a lot of people are going to bring up Arcane, but in terms of live action and a one-to-one recreation of the plot and, and scenes from the source material... It hits the nail on the head. But as good as it is, I think we are moving a bit too fast. And I think that's my only criticism so far. But we'll get to that later on. But uh, no, so far, yeah, I've been enjoying every single episode. I, I think I think it's way too fast as well. Mm. Like way, way, way too fast. I think I'm, I'm sensing the same kind of situation as House of the Dragon, where they were scared that they wouldn't get another season or something. So they're like, fuck, we got to get through this material. Go, 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 go. But yeah, no, no none of it, none of it seems right. Because, you know, one of the episodes wasn't even about, you know, Joel and Ellie. And so... I, I feel like we've had no time with these characters. Yeah. You know, they're supposed to do this cross country trip and they're fucking there. That's it. They, they, let, they let, me, it. let me stop you right there. So I've, I've actually made this trip. For those of you who don't know, I used to live in, in, in Jersey and I made the trip from Jersey to Kansas City, Missouri. Exactly the same trip they made. With, with, with a 14 year old girl that you were trying to save who was going to save humanity. Yes. She was driving the whole time, of course. But uh, and uh, <laughs> no, so believe it or not, um, we were on the road for eight hours and then of course eight uh, the rest of the, mm. the rest of the time you know the sleep and everything else but for eight to ten hours we were on the road we made that trip in three to four days not kidding with all the traffic sure. and everything sure three to four days yeah in in, uh, in episode six it I, I doesn't joel say it's been months since she's been bit and i think in episode one or two it was like it was like one month since she's been bit so how long have they been on the road yeah. I mean, look, I I am willing to 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 say like, okay, first of all, the the gasoline is weaker, so they're never going over like, say thirty thirty five miles an hour. But still, even supposing that, that that still only like doubles the time, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, he's got to stop and siphon gas every hour. They established that, so there's that. Um, However, still adding in all of that time, that's still only adding a few more days. Like, you're, yeah, you're right. That somehow the trip is taking too long, but at the same time, it seems way too fast. Like, I feel like they should have stopped for more adventures. Y- yeah, and 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 quite frankly, if you think about it, so the first episode is focusing on uh, who Joel is and setting him up and Tess up, kind of. And then at the very end of that episode, they meet Ellie. Then episode two, Joel and Ellie don't really start to bond. It's more Tess's episode and her goals and what she wants. And then episode three is completely Bill mm-hmm. and Frank. And then four, five, and six is where we start to have that Ellie-Joel bonding. But even then, looking at Wikipedia now, we're supposed to have nine episodes for this entire season. And so far, they've done a decent job of adapting a good chunk of the game. But I feel as though it should have been at least 10 to 12 episodes. As at least. And episode seven, oh, yeah. from what I see in the previews, is going to be Ellie's episode, where we see her backstory. and Which, ironically, funny enough... Um, Last of Us, the first game, has one DLC, and that one DLC is going to be Episode 7. It shows how Ellie got infected in the first place and all that stuff with her friend. Oh, with those previews, I thought they were, like, trolling everybody because, you know, the last thing we see is Joel dying, and then in the previews, there's no Joel. 
So everybody's looking at the previews going, oh my God, Joel's not in the show anymore. Like that's, that's what I think what they're, they're trolling with the previews. Preston, they would never kill the main character of a story. Stop it. I, I know, but it's like, but that's the, the, the kind of like idea in their head. Like, oh, maybe somebody's going to be fooled by, by the fact that like Joel's no longer, no longer in the show. He's no longer in the show. Nah, Joe. If, totally, if, totally. If, got... <laughs> if, if they ever do like a season four, Joel's going to be in season four. He's going to be in throughout the entire yeah. series. He's the main character, of course, and they never kill the main yeah. character. But uh, right. So episode four, uh, I'll do a quick synopsis of it real quick. Traveling through Missouri, Joel and Ellie are forced to take a detour through Kansas City, where they are ambushed. Joel kills two of the bandits, but a third overpowers him and nearly chokes him to death before Ellie saves him by shooting the man with Frank's pistol. More bandits find their bodies. Their leader, Kathleen, believes Joel and Ellie might be in contact with a man named Henry and orders a manhunt. Joel counsels Ellie about the firefight and gives her her pistol back. Kathleen's second-in-command, Perry, who, fun fact, Perry, her second-in-command, actually plays Tommy in the video games, which I thought was super cool. Mm, uh, okay. Perry thinks he has found Henry's hideout, but something is growing under the building. Kathleen orders it to be kept secret until they find Henry. Joel and Ellie sleep in a high-rise apartment for the night, hoping they can scout a way out of the city in daylight, but they awaken to find Henry and his younger brother Sam holding them at gunpoint. I liked episode four quite a bit. The fight between Joel and the bandits felt very real. Oh yeah, very visceral. Very visceral. Harsh fight, especially like the, the, the guy begging at the end. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was, that, was, that was really emotional. I, I, yeah, it felt very real. It felt like, like this is someone on, someone on the writing staff has seen someone beg for their life before. I don't know. This felt, <laughs> this felt very, it yeah. Felt, it, it reminded me of the beginning of Casino Royale, mm. you know, where you're like, oh my gosh, this is, this is, this fight is really real. Like it, like, you know, it's funny. Cause like when a fight is real, all of a sudden you're like, Ooh, I, this isn't this, this is actually more painful to watch than it is entertaining. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's not like a Kung Fu movie where you're like, Oh yeah, look at that fight. Oh yeah. Or like, you know, John wick or something. It was, it was like, it was like, ouch. Ooh, this is, these are two pe- These are people destroying each other and it's horrible. Yeah. So I did appreciate it. I did appreciate how, how real they made it. They made the fight. Yeah. You were saying something about Kathleen on the streams, how despite being the leader of this whole operation, she's not like too, too, uh, too mean, too vicious. She's, housewife well, no, I mean she is vicious but I'm saying she is truly vicious she's she's a she's a a pretty evil character but though her voice and demeanor is like school teacher and so it's quite jarring that someone with like such a such a nice sounding voice would be would be so uh would be so evil and they do explain it they kind of explain well like she inherited the mantle from her from her incredible brother who was this like incredible leader, you know, uh, that she didn't really earn it herself. Like, you know, it's hard for me to imagine someone with that like sweet, uh, school teacher voice, like rising to be the leader of a, of a paramilitary organization. Like that's just, that's difficult in my mind. Um, uh, just the, the sweetness of it, you know, like, um, you know, you, you kind of expect, the person to be either super charismatic or like super hard you know when you when you think of these like leaders right that have brought people together like how do you bring people together in, in hard times well you either are like you know really tough and demanding and and or you're you're charismatic and she she was she didn't appear any of those things and i was like how has she become how does how why is she the leader and then they kind of explain oh it's because she had this super charismatic brother who died and that she kind of just inherited it. But but they actually do, like, credit her with overthrowing Fedra and how, like, she really did actually inspire everybody. Um, so, I, but it's a lot of, it's a lot of tell, not show. I would have liked to see that happen. I would like to see why everybody was so dedicated to her. Why, you know, because it seems like it was more than just her taking the mantle from her brother like people were like they like thanked her for achieving what her brother did not that they thanked her for for overthrowing fedra and freeing the city 
You know, like you, you get that a little bit. We're told that, but I would have liked to see it in action. So I kind of what in the, in the whole vein of this is going too fast. They could have had a whole nother episode on Kansas city, getting into the backstory on who all, who all these characters were rather than just them telling us, you know, you know, rather than him saying like, no, I'm a murderer. I turned in the, the head of the, the resistance and it was, you know, Kathleen's brother. Like they could have done flashbacks to like show that stuff, you know, rather than just to be fair, this, like I said, this segment of the game takes place in Pennsylvania and Joel and Ellie are not fighting these guys. They're fighting Raiders, people who just want to take their shit and do other bad stuff to them. So, and and Joel made a good point. They're not Fedra. They're not Raider. They're just people. I mean, there's an interesting, there's an interesting, um, there's a, there's a movie. Well, I would not say it's a very good movie, but there's a movie called The Postman that stars uh, Kevin Costner. He Kevin Costner did like another apocalyptic, post-apocalyptic movie right after Waterworld. Like he did like two in a row. It was crazy. Uh, he so he did one called The Postman. And what was interesting about The Postman, the only thing I really remember about it, is the the bad guys are led by this leader and. At one point, he's like, do you know what I was before uh, society fell apart? And he's like, no. And he's like, I was a, a Xerox machine salesman. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? And he's like, in the old world, I was I was nobody. But then in the post-apocalyptic world, like he becomes this like charismatic leader that brings people together, right? Which is it was and it's the only like the only cool, kind of cool idea that that was in that whole movie was the fact that like prior to the the the, the, the most the most like famed like like guy who's like you know ruling the post-apocalypse was a Xerox salesman, you know, like Xerox machine salesman. So. I think, you know, had they gotten into like what she did before, you know, the apocalypse, you know, how she got thrust into this. I, I, you know, it's like all of these characters needed more time to breathe, more time for their backstory um, because they were really they're really cool characters, you know, and I wanted to see more of them. And we just didn't get more. Instead, we're just rushed on. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Move, move, move. Show's going to get canceled. Move, 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 you know? <laughs> but I think it's I think it's kind of like the Game of Thrones problem. Like, Game of Thrones, towards the end, couldn't have all yeah. these episodes because you got to pay all these actors an arm and a leg because they're in demand and they're going to demand more yeah. money. Pedro Pascal, he is on fire right now. He's, he's It seems like he's in everything. And in seven, eight days, we're going to get another show with him in it, Mandalorian, season three, coming back. Yeah. Yeah, I, I hope I hope, I hope, hope our boy isn't going to get overexposed, because right now he's just in everything. Reminds me of Kevin Hart a couple of years ago. Kevin Hart was in everything. Now you barely see him in anything. Yeah, they, they do this all the time. You know, they, they pick one person and they're for a while, and they're like, everything. You know, uh, Jennifer Lawrence was it for a while, or, or Scarlett Johansson, or... or um, Chris Pratt, you know, like they're just like everything, 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 you know. So I think Peter Pascal is the one. Like everybody loves him. That's the meme you had, you know, like, you know, Star Wars fans love him. Game of Thrones fans love him. Last um, of Us fans love uh, him. Uh, Nar- Last of Us fans, Narcos fans mm-hmm. love him, right? Mm-hmm. Like he's just, he can do no wrong right now. So. But no, I really like this episode, specifically the bonding between Ellie and Joel. I, I, Bella Ramsey, I was not sold on her, and I'm I'm warming up to her. But I will say my one problem with with Bella Ramsey as Ellie throughout all these episodes four, five, and six is that she overdoes the Liana Mormont attitude. Like she overdoes it mm. because Ellie in the games is sarcastic, but not overly so to this point. Ellie is more curious. She's more nice. She's nicer. Bella Ramsey is yeah. like is hamping it up, but just a tad. She's a little too sarcastic and snarky. She is. She is. I mean, I I think it works. I take the character like, you know, you got to remember that she's younger than Bella Ramsey. Like, I don't think she's convincingly fourteen. <laughs> you don't um, think so? I think so. But <clears throat> but she she's trying she's trying really hard to be as immature as a fourteen year old. And, and so, like, when you say, like, oh, she's hamming it up and she's being crazy here and she's doing this weird thing here, it's because she's trying to be 14. And 14-year-olds are freaking crazy, right? And that, that if she were actually, like, 17, 18, she's, she'd be too mature to be acting like that, you know? So, 
Um, I think a bit of it is is her trying to be 14 years old and us forgetting how like ridiculous 14 year olds are. In fact, 14 year olds are so ridiculous that they're they're never portrayed like that in in media. So I almost think like she's acting more like how a real 14 year old would act mm. that that her that her it's just that we've seen so many things where 14 year olds act like adults um, rather than emotionally unstable idiots that we forget you know <laughs> like 14 year olds are emotionally unstable idiots let's let's just remember that you know so um and that's independent of the fucking apocalypse so like so I, i'm gonna give her a break and say you know it's it, you know she's i think she's doing pretty well um uh yeah yeah um if anything like the Joel character, like where where he like goes from caring to trying not to be caring so quickly, like almost doesn't work for me. Yeah, th- this is what I was talking about, uh, like where their bonding is is very like well done, very well paced. In the games here, it just seems a little too mm. rushed. So mm, I, I do I do like the moments where right. she's like telling like, jokes. Like he seems he seems super attached to her and not super attached to her at once. And, and so you're like, I'm not sure, like, you're not sure what he's supposed to be at this point. Like, you know, is he, is he, cause he's already risked his life for her a million times. And it's like, it's like, is he really doing it as a promise to Tess, this woman that we also didn't get enough of? So we don't really know how much he was in love with Tess and how much he feels obligated to Tess, you know? So like, um, or does he actually like, feel for her or does he just see his daughter in her you know th- there's a lot of mystery here and, and he's conflicted you know we can maybe say that he's conflicted and and, and we and day to day is, is not going to be the same my criticism it's a great show it's a fucking great show and my criticism of it is there's not enough like right like it's like going to a fancy restaurant and being and getting that like morsel on the plate and being like, oh, God, yeah, that was delicious, but uh, I'm hungry here, okay? Like, give me more, mm-hmm. you know? Like, we had time. Like, you didn't need to rush stuff. We, you know, I, I wanted, like, I'm loving all the, I'm loving all the character development between Joel and Ellie. And, like, I wanted more of it. I wanted to know where they were. I loved the whole, like, thinking about Tess and how painful that is for Joel. Give me more of it. Give me more of the backstory of him and his daughter. Give me, you know, show me Maeve's daughter some more. Go do some flashbacks. Show me, show me Kathleen. Show me, show me the the brothers and and what they're how they survived this long and and, and everything, you know? And and don't get me started like once we get to the fucking Montana. Oh man. <laughs> I thought it was Wyoming. Is it Montana? No, it's Wyoming. It's it's what uh, whatever. Same shit. What, 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 same same difference. It's the same fucking <laughs> same fucking state. Okay, it doesn't like Wyoming and Montana are, are the same fucking. By state. the way, um, now that you um, say that, I'm thinking on it now. Um, a lot of those moments that you want, where well, they don't go into Henry and Sam's backstory in the games either. And like I said, Kathleen is and Perry and that whole situation is completely original. I think as much as I would want more episodes, and I want all that stuff from the games of them bonding and him showing her how to shoot and doing all this stuff. Um. It would seem like filler, thinking on it now. It would definitely seem like filler because so in the games, there's a moment when they when when they do meet Henry and Sam, and they escape from the the hunters and the raiders. There's a moment where they're in like the sewer area, and Henry, Sam, Joel, and Ellie get separated from each other, but their their team switches. So Henry's with Ellie and Joel's with Sam. And they have to navigate. And it was really, like, interesting how they did that. Like, it shows, like, why the team works and all this other stuff. And it feels weird, but, I don't know, having an episode where, in, where they're in the sewers and they're separate from each other and, you know, they're trying to bond with the new people and you know, trying to work with them, I feel like that would have been a filler. I mean, I will also say this, that because it's a show where the two characters keep moving on and you know that everybody else is, like, they're disposable. They're either going to die or they're, they're mm-hmm. going to be left behind, right? You know, like we know where this video game goes. The characters move on. And I admit that it would be a little weird if like four episodes were focused on like one group of people that are then never going to be seen mm-hmm. again, you know, like <laughs> ever, <laughs> right? You know, so like you might as well just keep it as like one or two, two episodes per adventure, 
um rather than having like a big clump of like four episodes like getting into kansas city or whatever um but uh, so so i mean i get it but uh there's so many more adventures that could be had you know i understand that like there must be stuff they passed over in the game like other neat characters that they met along the way uh um, actually right? no for the most part no it's just uh um, um, the majority of the, a good chunk of the game is, is Joel and Ellie surviving and bonding and, but so far everyone they've met, they've met in the games, uh, th- uh to be fair, they met. Okay. And there's no, there's no, there's no other characters that, that you met in the games that are not being shown. Uh, there is one more group of people that we haven't seen yet, but they're coming. Uh, but that aside, no, like the only difference is they met Bill. In the, in the in the games, which they did not meet him in the show. Okay. That's the only difference. So far, they've met Harry okay. and Sam, um, encountered the same group of raiders, trying the same bullshit, just in different locations. So far, it's been a faithful adaptation, gotcha. but because the game, because the show leaves out a lot of the game's, like, moments where it's Joel and Ellie alone, surviving, and bonding, and talking, and fighting, it's weird. Fighting with, with the, this, right. this NPC, you kind of get closer to them, in a sense. It's, it's weird. So, so yeah, but I mean, there's more time, but, but so, I mean, so besides like faceless soldiers and faceless raiders and faceless, um, clickers, like there's, there's nobody, there's nobody really that's been left out. Yeah. Now that I think of it, no, they meet Henry and Sam, Bill, we meet okay. Bill. Um, and of course, Tommy and, 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 uh, and Maria in, uh, uh, in, in the, in the community in episode six. But yeah, for the most part, yeah. Yeah. So far. It's okay, been on track. Okay. Episode five: Henry and Sam make a uh, truce with Joel and Ellie. Joel wants to part ways, but Henry proposes they escape the city together using underground tunnels that only Henry knows. Joel re- hesitantly agrees. Henry confesses to Joel that he was responsible for the death of Kathleen's brother, turning him over to Fedra in exchange for medication for Sam's leukemia. So this was actually a plot um, for The Walking Dead a while ago. So in The Walking Dead, the villain Negan oh. is actually this hor- horrible guy. But before he became who he was, he had this wife, and she had cancer. And the way they had to survive the zombie apocalypse was was really fucked up. And uh, I'm, I, I kind of like that they brought that back here. Um, it, it just, yeah. Um, but uh, after, so in, in the video in the video game, it's not the leukemia. I don't remember. I, I really don't. They were such a small part of okay. the game that. It, they're there. Ironically, the same thing, their end, the way they end, happens in the game that it happens here, but we'll get to that. Um, after escaping yeah. through the tunnels, the group is attacked by a sniper, also happens in the game, from an upper story window. Joel sneaks up and kills him, but finds out he was raiding Kathleen, who arrives with her militia. Before Kathleen can kill Henry, a horde of infected emerge from underground, including a large bloater that beheads Perry and a child clicker that mauls Kathleen. After the group escapes to a motel, Sam shows Ellie that he was bitten on the leg. The next morning, Sam is infected and attacks Ellie. Henry is forced to kill him, but then shoots himself. Joel and Ellie bury them and set off on foot, heading west. So, a lot of this was was awesome. I really love, like, the bloater. I didn't think they would actually do that, but I felt like they would have to for the trailer purposes, because yeah, seeing that in the trailer was awesome. Yeah. Um... Um, there, there, there was a moment. Yeah. I mean, I was watching it. My, my wife was, was in another part of the room. And when, when the car like sunk into the hole and the, and the, and the, the dead started, the fungus people started mm-hmm. coming out. I just started laughing. I was like, Oh, well done. Well done. Because like the whole episode, you've forgotten that they exist right you know like you forget you you always forget that like oh right the whole fundamental plot of the show is the fungus people you know and like you we were lulled into thinking that the threat is kathleen and and then all of a sudden you're like oh right and i was like ah brought back oh this is oh this is gonna be fun and then and then when they were fighting and i thought man isn't it really weird that like None of the main characters are getting bit, and then I like caught myself. I was like, "No, they did." Oh man! Oh. So it was it was really well done. What's even worse is that Ellie like tried to help Sam by like putting some of her blood on his wound, and yeah. then the next morning it didn't work. That's not how that yeah. works. She's immune, yeah. but it doesn't work that way. And right, yeah. Um. So so I have to say the the because they're essentially zombies, not zombies. 
I hate the ones that run. Those are the ones that freak me out the most. And <laughs> the Walking Dead zombies, like, realistically, we could probably fuck those guys up. Because they walk. They walk and they kind of, like, speed walk towards you, kind of. Um, mm. But the ones from Dawn of the Dead, the new one from 2004, where they fucking yeah, run yeah. at you like Run, crazy maniacs. Zombies, yeah. Holy shit, those are though though we're fucked with those. Or the ones from uh, uh, Twenty Eight Days Later, we're fucked with those. Yeah, yeah. The uh, I was reading the the zombie books on like how to how to actually like deal with a zombie outbreak, like and how you would clear your city. And like so, one strategy they put in the book, they're like, okay, well the thing about zombies is no matter what the speed, your 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 city is probably going to have a beltway. So. You get you get you know a car you get some pickup trucks and you you have them start circling the beltway and you see you have the the cars circle at whatever the zombie speed is like so if, if a zombie walks at 10 miles an hour or you know you you uh, you drive your car at 10 miles an hour um, if they're if they're running faster you you drive at that speed you then you circle the beltway and the the, the zombies will come out and they'll start following your car at the exact same speed and so the people in the back of the car will then in the back of the pickup truck will then just like pick off the zombies and you circle the city like essentially like you know for for a few days until all your zombies have been uh, have been shot <laughs> so <laughs> it's like it's <laughs> believe it or not one of my favorite audiobooks of all time is uh, World War Z by Max Brooks mm-hmm. Mel Brooks's son and he does a, a section on this. And by the way, for those of you who haven't, I know the Brad Pitt movie, blah, 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 blah. The book is always way better. Please check out the audiobook. Mark Hamill lends his voice in it. It's so good. It's basically an interview. The entire book is an interview of interviewing survivors because the zombie war was done. And then the guy goes around and interviews people who survived and how they survived. And at one point in the, the, the book, they actually do explain how most cities were cleared out. Now, of course, you have to get the zombies out of the buildings, right? You can't just honk a horn, and you have to continuously make sure that zombies from miles and miles and miles away are coming to this one point. So the United States military had to redo the way they do things, right? Because apparently the United States military, when they shoot to kill somebody, they have to, like, like head, they have to uh, body shot. So they have to retrain to mm. headshot. Not only that, though, but they are in row. They're in a rings of three, and in the in the center is a large boombox that plays like Metallica. And they crank it the fuck up, and then all the zombies come out. They all shoot, shoot. When they have to reload, the second ring comes out and replaces the guy that has to reload. Shoot, shoot, shoot. The third ring comes out and replaces the guy that has to reload, while the other two rest and chill for a bit, and then rinse and repeat. That's how they. That's how they cleared out a lot of, like, the towns and cities and stuff. Because those guys are in there, mm-hmm. like, under rubble and stuff. And one misstep, they could scratch and bite you. Here, no, they're all over the place. You could never clear out the fungus zombies. These things are all over the place with the tendrils. And they've mutated. Yeah. And they're special ones. You have the clickers, who are, which are, like, super fast. And the bloaters, which are incredible. It's like that they're, like, underground mm-hmm. and things like that. Like, what do you, yeah. The, the bloaters were, like, super yeah, tanky, yeah. and you have to be out, like, in the wilderness because they don't congregate out there as much. And, uh, <sighs> scary as fuck. What's, what's even more scary, I don't think we touched on this in the previous review, is that um, this is all happening because of global warming. Yeah. Because, and that, that, that annoys me, that annoys and frightens me a little bit because it's fucking February. One of the coldest months of the year. Yesterday, for me, it was, like, 65 degrees Fahrenheit. Yeah, yeah. No, it's true. And and it is it is an accurate fact that like that like you know, if if fungus were able to survive just a couple degrees hotter, they'd be able to like, you know, live in us and and uh it, it's like it's like very very it's you know, it's it's not that different, you know, like the like yeah, they're like they're talking about just like it's not that much of an evolutionary jump. Not, not not to create zombies. I think that's a little ridiculous. But just for the fact that like a fungus that we, that could live inside people and, and like f- screw up screw up people is not actually that uh not that far fetched. By the way, for the audience overseas, sixty five Fahrenheit is uh, like a eighteen to twenty Celsius. So it's a fairly 
fairly decent for <laughs> February, where it should be very cold. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, Preston, yeah. do not worry about the fungus thing. I have it on good authority that if the fungus were to survive in us, we could just use ivermectin. Joe Rogan was right all along. He's the prophet. We could just use oh, ivermectin oh, yeah, yeah, to, yeah. to combat it. Um, oh, <laughs> but uh, but Carmen Carmen likes to get my goat because like he he knows he know, he knows that like Joe Rogan pisses me <laughs> off like so much. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, uh, what else, what else was cool about, uh, the, just think that ending, the thing is like the ending of that episode makes you forget the rest of it. Yeah. Um, but, but there was some, uh, but it was, it was, it was really great being lulled into that and then have the big payoff at the end. It was a re- really great climax. She, you know, she Ellie, Bella Ramsey definitely pulled off the whole, like, like at when, 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 when Henry like, uh, puts the gun on himself, like Ellie, her reaction, she pulled that off spectacularly that was one of the very few moments yeah. in in from the games in the show that she had to pull off and oh that scene where he like kills his brother and then him oh that that yeah. was yeah. just no they pulled that off brilliantly yeah and she has you know the believable naivety you know like when she like puts the blood on him and all of that like you know like um you know you, you know granted i i, I think a 14 year old would would be normally would be like now you're a goner but you know you got to remember that she's also raised in these like weird fedra society and and um it's kind of screwed up to begin with so uh you know um but uh, you know she, i think she tried to she did pull it off i think she pulled it off okay yeah i mean i believed it like when she was like you know putting her blood on it blood on him I was like, it's like, there's no way, like, I would have done that. Like, I think at, like, age 10, I would have understood that, like, that they, they would have to do vaccination and sciencey stuff. I can't just put my blood on stuff. But, you know, I understand that she's also, like, a crazy character in the show. I, I think she's more normal in the video game, you tell me, right? Uh, she, Yeah, she's more like a normal girl. She's not as snarky. She's sarcastic, but not as sarcastic. She's not as snarky. Yeah. She's chill. But, you know, I get the sense that, like, besides being snarky, that she has more, like, a lot more PTSD and, 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 and um, baggage in, in the show than she does in the, uh, in the video game. Um, if, if we get a specific group that she encounters, then yes, that will be worse. But yes, it will, next episode is all about her. Uh, episode 7 is all about her. Okay, okay. All right, so we'll find out, find out everything about her. Okay. All right. And then they, uh, then they make it all the way to to, uh, to Wyoming. Actually, do you want to read the um, do you want to read the episode synopsis for six? Um, uh, let me let me see here. It's just uh, three months after Henry and Sam's death, Joel and Ellie reach a small, thriving community in Jackson, Wyoming, where Joel is reunited with Tommy, whose wife Maria is pregnant. Elia learns about Sarah's fate from Maria. Joel confides in Tommy about Ellie's immunity and his own declining mental state. Um, uh, Joel asks Tommy to take Ellie to the Fireflies as he's afraid and he cannot keep her safe. Ellie overhears them and confronts Joel, who insists he'll, that they will part ways. In the morning, Joel changes his mind after remembering his daughter, and the two of them travel to Colorado on horseback. They find the Fireflies have vacated their base, possibly relocating to a hospital in Utah. Joel and Ellie attempt to escape a group of raiders. When one of them attacks Joel, Joel kills him, but is stabbed during the struggle. Joel and Ellie escape the others, but Joel soon collapses and falls falls off the horse, leaving Ellie unsure how to proceed. So yeah, timeline wise, you're right that I don't see, I don't understand how this makes sense. Uh, like like <laughs> like like they're not just taking three months to go across the whole country. They're going they're taking three months to go from Kansas City to Wyoming. Um, yeah, that's ridiculous. What were they doing for three months? To be to be fair, they they didn't have their car, so it probably would take them three months to trek across from Kansas City, Missouri to Wyoming. Like, do you think they're they're like walking? What else would they be? They'd be using bikes. Which, in hindsight, maybe would be yeah, very, bicycles uh, would be fucking great. Would be they wouldn't <laughs> find another car. <laughs> like, um, <laughs> let me let me let me let me. Okay, first of all, let me let me. <laughs> you gonna Google Maps this? Yeah, because even 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 three months 
is a, is a, is a long time i think for for um walking kansas city to jackson okay um let's see here so it's 1000 miles from from kansas city to jackson wyoming and um let me and that supposedly takes 343 hours um walking so let's say they walk what like eight eight hours a day eight hours a day would take would take a month and a half so they're walking four hours a day (sighs) see it's for for, it's yeah it's it's (laughs) Well, that's, this, this is my problem with uh, The Last of Us adaptation on HBO. A lot of it, a lot of their bonding was done off screen. So, so it feels very underdeveloped and not earned. That's my one problem. Everything else has been spectacular so far. They're going really slow. I don't know. And if they're really hanging together, like we saw their, their bonding episode, Driving Cross Country, and it was like a good bonding episode. But then you have to multiply that by 90 if it's three months. They should be like, tight right like it's three months (laughs) three months of only spending every single day talking to one other person come on come on they would either be very tight or sick of each other and to be fair there are a lot of cities and towns between kansas city missouri and jackson wyoming so they probably had to for a good chunk of the midwest actually no the midwest is is there are a lot of towns in the midwest that are like far apart from each other yeah so like the like where I am, the capital, the one of the main cities. Like a lot of the big cities in the state I am are like 50, 50 minutes like away from each other, uh, give or take. Yeah. So forty to fifty minutes away from each other. So the Midwest is fairly spread out. Like if you're gonna live here, you need a like a car. You cannot no, I, live I, here without I, having yeah, a car. Yeah, no, I read about like there, so there are a number of books about people that have walked across America, and it's only possible because you have to stop at like. Like they would go into these small towns in the middle of nowhere and there'd be no place to sleep. So you go and like at like go to the local pastor at the church and be like, hi, can I sleep on the floor of the church? And the guy'd be like, okay. And like that's like how one is able to do it. Like it's the only way to really walk across America is to like ask permission to sleep on the floors of churches. But you know, <laughs> you know, at least once you go west of the Mississippi River. Um so yeah, but they're camping or whatever. But it's um, mm-hmm. yeah, three three. That was a long time. They they should they should be really attached at this point. So like, <laughs> yeah. See, okay. Episode six was my least favorite episode so far. Um, mm. And I I think it's it's um, yeah. I think the relationship of Joel and Ellie like doesn't make sense at this point. It feels like it's been four days since the last episode not three months right like i don't think their relationship has changed that much you know like she goes up and makes that joke about the dam and it's like any and as if they were just doing the pun jokes in the previous ep, you know the previous couple episodes and it's like that was three months ago like they should know everything about it. they should know the fact that it's like three like he doesn't tell her about his daughter over the course of three months like I've done a lot of camping trips. I've done a lot of like backpacking trips, camping trips. I've done a lot of those trips. And man, you really get to know your friends. Like stuff because you start getting into conversation like, oh, what's your relationship with your dad when you were both like when you're 11? You know, like just ra- like random stuff like your brothers and sisters and all the fucked up stuff. You know, like you get into that when you're just when you have countless hours with somebody um, a- like alone doing nothing (laughs) so except like sitting on buses or walking you know so the premise there kind of kind of is off to begin with so then we get to their community and my problem with tommy is that we were only given one sentence about tommy before this and that is that what he got he was put in jail and Joel had to bail him out. And it seemed like Tommy was the irresponsible one and Joel 
was the responsible one. And now Tommy is like Joel. And that like upsets him, but at the same time, like makes him want to pass on Ellie to him because Tommy has become Joel. Um, I mean, he's become Joel in so many ways. Like, they both, I mean, they both married black women, which I think is just kind of funny. Like, <laughs> to be fair, in the games, that's not the case, but they, they, I know, they but the, changed there's it this, up. There's that look, you know, where he's like, oh, actually, we're together. And then there's this, like, look. And I was like, is it, is it because he married a black woman, too? Like, it was like, because he, he, he gives him this weird look, like, you're with a woman? Like, but, like, because there, there shouldn't be any problem, right, with Tommy, like, marrying a woman right right like you know but but it was just like he kind of gives him this weird look like oh there's this like awkwardness like um why is it awkward oh i married a black woman you married a black woman like you you you, like somehow we we i'm trying to be like you or something weird (laughs) (laughs) i did not think of that at all that did not click at all good Boy, call me that out. I don't know. I mean, maybe I'm. Maybe I'm. I don't know if that was part of it. I don't. I probably not. I, I or it was just a weird scene. Like, oh, why was there this like awkward <laughs> pause when like Tommy reveals that he's married to Maria? Like, okay, <laughs> you know, like people get married. You know, I take it as they haven't seen each other in so long, and like, oh, little brother, you're you're getting it in there. You're getting married. Ah, like that's how I took it as that, uh-huh. but. Yeah, or 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 I took it like they had some mistrust uh, of Maria, and Tommy was with her, and therefore like they couldn't trust Tommy, you know, or something like that. Well, of course they mistrust know. Maria. She's a communist, Preston. Come on, <laughs> Man, that was a weird scene. <laughs> I that scene was also, hilarious. Yeah, also also that I mean it was funny, but like Tommy not knowing that they live in a fucking commune, like <laughs> it's like how dumb do you have to be, dude? Like, you're sharing everything. Like, of course. Like, you've been living there for years, and your wife is Maria, and you've never talked about communism? Like, what? <laughs> like, what the fuck? Like, like, so there's just a lot of premise stuff about the episode that, like, I didn't like. Like, I like the first just half. Didn't see- I, I, I like this little, like, like break they take from all the insanity. Like, for the when they encounter, like, the outskirts yeah. of the community, and the dog comes in, that tension was, was good. I like that. First of all, like the Good American moment. Indian scene was was great. Like uh, I love the the actor that plays the woman, the the woman, uh, the old woman. She used to be on Northern Exposure, this old uh, uh, comedy series, um, and she's just she has just incredible comic timing, you know, because she just <laughs> delivers everything so deadpan and flat. She's so she's so funny. Um, she's been in a lot of other things. She was in Smoke Signals and a lot of other, um, uh, a lot of, you know, a, a, anytime you need a, a, a stock American Indian woman, they, they, they look to her. But she's so funny because she just has the most deadpan um, delivery of her lines. She's hilarious. And uh, when, 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 God, Pedro is such a good fucking actor. When he sees Tommy for the first time, like, the, Tommy, like the way he's, oh my God. That's, yeah. I, I yeah, believed that's it. I believe that they're brothers. And, uh, no, him having, like, the panic attack and, and seeing the ghost of his daughter or, or who he thinks is his daughter. And it's just, yeah. God, he's such a good but actor. I would, oh, what I would have liked is more about – I would have liked more about Irresponsible Tommy so I could contrast it with Responsible Mature Tommy. You they know, kind of talk about it, how, the only, uh, how they were, were all in, like, this group – and, and they were just doing fucked up shit, and Joel tried to do what, yeah. what he could to get them to survive. And Tommy, well, to be fair, joining the Fireflies seems like the irresponsible thing to do, according to everybody. So, hmm. I and didn't Tommy join the Fireflies at some point, but then left them for some reason? Yeah, yeah. So, I, yeah, I guess yeah. that's it. But um, the one the one plot I kind of really like, as it says here. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Joel confides in Tommy about Ellie's immunity and his own declining mental state. I kind of like that, and I hope they focus more on that going forward because he's too old for this shit. No, I, 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 I thought I thought he did a great job. I just wish the bonding with Ellie wasn't off camera. I wish there was more about his relationship with Tommy and what Tommy was like before, so I could understand like the tension. Like I felt there was some like. I felt when he first got there, there was like weird jealousy and tension between him and Tommy. 
And then you find out that it's not jealousy intention. It's the fact that he actually sees Tommy as the perfect person to hand off Ellie to. And that there wasn't like weird, awkward jealousy. Like I thought there was something weird with like getting back to like the getting back to the 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 black wife thing like i understand that you're like (laughs) is this really an important thing and i'm like it is because he's like he's he's getting married and he's having a kid and he's he's getting married to a woman who i mean we have no idea what what um joel's wife looks like but like you know the idea that he's restarting his life and he's restarting it he's become joel he's the responsible one now you know he's getting married and he's having a kid He's he's essentially beco- like he's becoming Joel's original life, and like that upsets Joel. And like I sensed like tension, like oh my gosh, like he is achieving everything that I had, and he's moved on and is happy, and 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 I can't do that. I'm still screwed up because I lost Maeve's daughter. You know, like I still, <laughs> I fe- I. Fe- I felt that was like, I felt that was like the first part of the episode was that like, oh, I've got a problem with my brother and there's this tension because I, my brother is going to be happy and he's going to be happy because he's achieving my life. And, and like, I'm, you know, he's, he's, he's getting married. He's having, he's having a daughter. He's moving, he's become responsible. He's moving on with his life. He's, he's building this great community. Um, And then, you know, I'm joking that it's more like, you know, more on the nose because his wife is also a black woman. <laughs> you know, he's like <laughs> specifically like recreating Joel's life. It's just, <laughs> but, um, but it's, um, <sighs> but then that, but then that's all just dropped. Right. Uh, I guess it was a red herring and it, it's really about something else, you know? Um, and there was no tension between the brothers, I guess. So, uh, uh, so I, I don't know. I just, the, I don't know if the episode worked for me, you know, like I'm just, it felt like there was a lot of emotional dead ends, you know, or, or things that came out of nowhere or stuff that was done off screen. Like there was too much that was off. There was too much off screen that was, that happened that needed to establish all the stakes in this episode. And then the stakes that were established, like didn't go where, um, didn't go anywhere. So, so this episode should have been at least 30 minutes longer, and I'll tell you why. Yeah. At least 20, 30 minutes longer. So, um, go, uh, meeting Tommy, and then the stuff that happens in Colorado, that's like two different levels in the video game. Okay. And they take time to establish it. I'm glad, because in the game, when they meet Tommy, raiders attack and shit, and they have to fend that off. I'm glad that didn't happen. That was so lame. But in the Colorado level, uh, most of it is atmosphere and tension and fun times because a good chunk of it is uh, ellie and joel riding on horseback walking uh, just you know trekking through the university and of course the animals have been let out the giraffe scene is not in here like there's a moment where ellie's like whoa what is that and he's like yeah. that's a giraffe i don't know i'm doing i, I don't know why i gave Paige a pascal russian accent that's a giraffe um, and she's like, whoa, whoa, they're monkeys. And like, they, they go through stuff and, and some of the university has like spores and it's infected, but right, like, you're, you're right. like, oh shit. No, I mean, it, it's, um, trek through it's this. very, tw- like 12 monkeys. Did you ever, did you ever see 12 monkeys? Is that the one with Brad Pitt and Bruce Willis? Yeah. There's mm-hmm. a scene, seen there's it. a scene where like, he's in, he's in Philadelphia walking around and it's winter. And then all of a sudden there's a lion. And you're like, what the hell is going on? And you you kind of find out at the end, like, like that that there was a zoo break right before like the um, right before uh, the the world goes post apocalyptic. But like, um, you'd think those animals would migrate south, like an African, like an Af- <laughs> like an African, like a giraffe, like it's not going to yeah, chill the- out like in Colorado. Like, come on. <laughs> like, <laughs> 
<laughs> well, but in the game, like, there's such a, like, a nice, neat moment between them where, like, you know, they're just trekking through the college, and then, of course, that whole thing happens. That, I think we needed that moment. I don't know why the fuck they cut that. Once again, I think it's budget constraints, because this is setting up to be one of HBO's most expensive shows ever, and it really, really shows. Ev- yeah, everything is done so well. CGI is good. They got, of course, Pedro Pascal, who's on top of the world right now. He's Mando. Um, yeah, yeah. Know. But, I mean, granted, it's a small cast, though, so... Right, right, no. but they got to pay his ass a lot, and plus they're no, shooting like, on location sure you, I'm and sure shit. You got to pay Pedro a lot, but you only have to pay Pedro. You know, with Game of Thrones, you had to pay. <laughs> Bella you had to Ramsey, pay, no. Bella, I'm sure she, Bella Ramsey is discount right now, but season two <laughs> maybe she'll ask for some more. I mean, she deserves it. I, but. That's a, that's another thing. I doubt they're gonna. First off, there's no way. El, the, for, Bell Ramsey's already grown. She's 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 probably stopped growing already. There's no way she can play 14 year old Ellie and like 20 year old Ellie. There's no way because they, they need to they need to do it. They need to do a time skip or something. Like they for, will for, and but but it's gonna be weird. Like Bell Ramsey's not gonna grow. She's not gonna get slightly taller and look a little different, more mature. Because she's, no, she's already right. 18, 19, so that's done. No, I mean, that's most most women, most women reach their adult height um, at, like, age 13 or 14. So, like, she's she's not she's not going to get any bigger, no. Um, and, you know, she, she's not going to get... She's already 20, right? So, you know, she's not going to get... Uh, unless she unless she um, decides to have a child, she's not, it's not like, you know, she's going to get curvier or anything like that. So, I don't know. She'll, 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 they're she'll gonna have fun. to recast her. They have to. There's no way they can't. They're gonna have to recast the role of Ellie to someone that kind of looks like Bella Ramsey, kinda. Because there's no way. Because they want to put out. I'm, I'm assuming it'll take maybe two to two years to film season two. What? What? No. Well, uh, wait. How old does Ellie become? Uh, it's like a five year time skip. Oh, then that's perfect. What are you talking about? She's playing a 14 year old, and now she's gonna play somebody that's actually her age. Yeah. <laughs> But it's Ellie gets like taller and and more like mature and more grizzled and I don't know Ellie if Bella Ramsey you plays you Ellie again you it's... don't need to make you don't need to make her taller you can make her more grizzled <laughs> a lot can be done with a lot can be done with makeup and stuff a lot can be done with makeup and clothes you know I don't know like even in two years Bella Ramsey will still look like she's fourteen she's a, she's she's short and. Uh, no, no, I'm, I'm serious. Like they've prob, they're probably already doing stuff. They're first of all, they do all sorts of crazy stuff, like duct taping down breasts and like putting stuff, putting people in clothing that makes that that like hides hips and stuff like that. Like, um, did I I, I told you about watching um, his dark materials? Yes, where she's like a villain. Um, well, no, she is. She she is. But I'm talking about the the lead of his dark materials, um, Daphne. Um, oh, right, um, the young girl. Like it, in between Daphne seasons, King. she just grew the fuck up. Yeah. So yeah. So 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 when they started filming his dark materials, she's like 12 or 13 years old, and then by, by the time they are finished, she was like 16 or 17 years old. And you know, they they pulled it off. They did, even though the series is only supposed to take place over the course of like a year. But it's very clear, like, you know, they're they're trying to hide it, but it's just very clear, you know, like a seven, like a 12 year old has, has different physical features from a 17 year old. And like, it's very clear that she's like, you know, curvy by the end of the show. And, and and like, it works. They play on that because like the the characters kind of are having a, um, uh, a kind of sexual awakening, um, by the end of the show, but it's, it's a, um, but they really did what they could to like hide, like hide her curves before that with different clothes, and then all of a sudden they're like, yeah, let's show her off, you know, near the end. Um, it's it's the same. It's the same with you know with Bella Ramsey. Like I, know, I don't want to go into she, detail as to what Ellie will be encountering in season two. That I feel like they should recast her for someone a little taller and more grizzled so i'll leave it at that but for the people who played part two you know what i'm talking about there's gonna be some things that ellie has to do and it's gonna be fucking weird watching bella ramsey have to engage in certain things even though she's still this, this she's 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 a professional <laughs> actor I, like whatever. They, we'll she see. can pull these things off well we'll like, see the, the, you know these people these people are are versatile 
I I you know, I, I, I won't go into more detail. We'll we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. It'll be the funniest I mean, thing look, ever. Though you're implying that you're implying that there's going to be some like sex. Scene. No, actually, no, no, actually, there's gonna be there's gonna be a moment where. I'm, I'm not going to go into it to spoil it for the audience. Uh, it's just, it'll be okay, funny. Okay. It'll be comical. Do I want this to happen? Yes, because it'll be fucking hilarious watching Bella Ramsey have to do this one thing against this other person who, you'll see. But um, I will say, though, okay, okay. I will say, though, one of my uh, one of my favorite little Easter egg moments in the episode was when Ellie is eating in the cafeteria and she goes, what are you looking at? And this 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 young girl is like hiding behind a pillar and just walks off. For those of you who play part two, that may be Dina. Uh, Dina becomes very close with Ellie, like her best friend. But of course, that's Last of Us Part Two slash Season Two stuff going on. <clears throat> well, this 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 show is this show is a hit, and so there's definitely going to be season two. It was renewed, yeah. Yes, I believe it was renewed, and and Neil Druckmann, who uh, actually does the whole story for the games, he and he's a part of this as well very closely attached he said that part two will will take after season two or season two will take after part okay. two so no so far now there's only there's only there's only two last of us games or is there a third one there's two i so someone before we end the podcast episode um someone sent me a message so far there are only two games and someone sent me a message here real quick i kind of want to get to it I hope you don't mind load earlier message i'm sorry um, someone sent me a message on Patreon, this guy, uh, Owen, he goes, Hey dude, just wondering why The Last of Us Part 2 gets so much hate. I've never played the games, so I'm a little worried for the second season. Do you personally like the second game? I don't mm-hmm. want to look up why people don't like it because I'm afraid of spoilers, but I trust your opinion. The reason people don't like it is for two reasons. The, they, the story goes in a different direction, and there's a character, I was telling this to Preston, there's a character in the game, she's one of the main characters, it's a new character, and she's tall and a bit muscular and she's not very i don't want to say the word feminine but a lot of the gamer bros are upset that she's not the typical Lara Croft uh type you remember Lara Croft mm. from like the early 2000s where like it was pixelated but they made yeah, sure that she had pointy boobs and like that hourglass <laughs> yeah, figure yeah. and she was right, super hot right. and- no i know and everybody wants their like marvel superheroes like muscular woman with enormous breasts that don't sound not even right. muscular yeah. women just like like fit slim you know like yeah, yeah. and um mm-hmm. one of the next main characters that we get in part two She's very controversial because not only does she not fit into the stereotypical type of what a woman's supposed to look like and, you know, be like, but she also does some insane shit. And the, like, the story direction, people just don't like it, which is fair. You know, you know, people didn't like it when uh, the Red Wedding happened. That's fair. But George was able to make it still good nonetheless. I think they did the same thing. I think part two is great. One of the th- reasons I love part two mm. is the gameplay. It's fucking amazing. I could go on a rant all all day, but uh, part two will be controversial for many reasons. And uh, yeah, um, it won't be another escort mission. <clears throat> it will be Ellie will take the reins. Is Joel in it? Yes, Joel is very much in, in part two, but it's mostly Ellie's story opposite this other main character. And in the game... As much as people love Ellie, at one point for a good chunk of the game, they take control of this other main character. And this other main character becomes the main focus for quite a bit. And people didn't like that. So a lot of the the opinions against Part 2 is mainly gamer bros being upset that, you know, of all those things I just said, plus a couple of other things that I don't want to spoil. So good luck, because... I feel like people are going to go out of their way to spoil what happens in part two because they don't like it and people are assholes. So good luck with that. Trying to avoid that. Mm, you too, mm. Preston. But you're but you're but you're saying the 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 official um, red team review karma opinion <laughs> is that Last of Us Part Two is good. I liked it a lot. Yes. And hopefully it'll be it'll be adapted into a very good second season yes i liked it a lot yes uh, there will be obvious some like uh, retreading of ground that we saw in part one um but for the most part if i give last last of us part one a 10 out of 10 which i would that game was great i would give part two a 9 out of 10 there are some things that i didn't like but they're so like minuscule that <sighs> the game the game is just good it's just really good okay, personally okay, speaking okay, cool. but i know a lot of people really hate the fuck out of it and ah, i just 
the gameplay was so good. The story was pretty good too. You, by the end of it, you are emotionally exhausted from what happened. But I'm a little disappointed in the sense because I feel as though they're going to cut back a lot of what happens in the games for part two, like they did here. Because a lot of the stuff here is is mm. uh, is cut out. And, you know, not to sound like a broken record, but Joel and Ellie, that feels very underdeveloped. Yeah, I mean, I don't know why they're Russian stuff. I mean, they could have easily, they could have, you know, they, they could have, they could have, they could have, considering that there's only two games, they could have season one half the game, season two, second half the ga- of, of the game, and then season three could be part two and season four, the second half of part two, you know, like, I don't know why they're. See, you say that now, they, but once again, we didn't like the yeah. filler. We didn't like filler in Game of Thrones. We didn't like it in House of the Dragon. We don't. We don't like filler. And in order for I, no, I thought I thought the filler episode was a great episode. Which filler episode I, are you talking I, about? Because for the most part, there's no filler in this. <clears throat> I, I I well, I like the Bill. The Bill episode was was all Bill and Frank episode. It was great. That was a great episode. That was complete complete and utter filler, and it was a fucking fantastic episode. Um, and then what's the next one? Is Ellie and the and Joel on the road mm-hmm. before they get to. Um, Kansas City. That's a that's a great episode. Yeah, that's a great episode, and it's all filler. You, you thought know, it was I'm, filler? I'm fine with the filler. <clears throat> well, see, see, it was like the development. It was like their relationship development episode. You know, episode three. So, um, no, I liked it a lot. So, like, look, I don't mind filler. I, I'm not a man who 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 minds filler. I only mind filler if I think it's at the expense of of like plot that needs to actually be developed and finished. And like, if, if, if as long as all the plot points, you're going to get to the plot points, I don't mind filler, but don't give me filler. And then, and then deprive me of resolution to something. That's, that's the only thing about, <laughs> you know, well, uh, I will like say battle you're right. Galactica like- is just like, <laughs> just, Oh my God. Like, I can't believe they could, they could, have so much filler and then resolve nothing you know so i will say you're right about one thing in regards to like the whole filler thing it's a shame ben shapiro can't understand this the show is not about zombies the show is about well zombies zombie shows are never about zombies what do you what like like right and ben doesn't realize that about that a fundamental thing about zombie shows is it's never about zombies that's the whole point of the zombie movie is that it's not about zombies yeah Right, oh, and uh, no, yeah, that, that, that's why that, I, that filler episode, <clears throat> I don't see it as filler, but at the same time, you're right, it is. That's why it worth so much. It's, it's about what we have left after everything goes yeah. to hell. It's about what we make of it. So, um, But episode four, I liked a lot. Episode five, I did. Uh, episode six, not the best, but still fairly fine. Still pretty good. Yeah, no, I mean, um, like, you, that's you, what I'm saying. Like, I'm saying like episode six is probably the weakest episode we've gotten so far, and yet it's still pretty good. Still pretty great. Still pretty great episode. You know, still really interesting seeing their community and and the contrasting it with everything before and and the American Indian and the scene and then getting caught and, and with the dogs and the, just the beautiful scenery as well of them just like hiking through the wilderness. It's there, there's a lot of good aspects of the show of of that episode and the acting is great and and um the the actor from from uh, True Blood what's it what, um the, who played Maria did, uh, did a fantastic job. Um, oh, you, you you actually knew she was from True Blood. Nice, nice, nice. Well, I actually liked her in True Blood. Uh, it's the only it's like I've watched True Blood seasons one to three and then and then stopped. Like, that's like, a good move because yeah. that, those are the best seasons. The, not, everything yeah. after season three was trash. Uh, R- Rutina Rutina Wesley, mm-hmm. Rutina Wesley. Yeah, she's um, yeah no she she did um, she did she did great. So uh, there were a lot of there were a lot of really positive things about the episode. I just kind of. I don't know. It, it was just the weakest one so far. So episode seven. Uh, I'll start with the synopsis this, here. This is our, our our little our little supplement. We we, we did we did our we did, we recorded. Um, why do you why do you always got to tell people this stuff? Go ahead. What what, what 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 are you saying? Like people can't figure it out. <laughs> this, is, this is our little supplement. Now that we've we've watched episode seven. Do you even remember what we talked about for episodes four to six? <laughs> yes, of course. We talked about episodes four, five, and six. Um, so, yes, yes. So episode seven, Ellie and, and injured Joel shelter in an abandoned house. As Joel approaches death, he urges Ellie to leave him. But she remembers her time in Fedra Military School, which she attended with her best friend, Riley mm. Abel. While Ellie causes trouble and fights with her peers, 
Riley ran away and has been missing for three weeks. Riley sneaks back into their dorm room and reveals to Ellie that she has joined the Fireflies. She brings Ellie to an abandoned mall where they explore a photo booth, an arcade, and a carousel. Riley tells Ellie that the Fireflies have assigned her to a post in Atlanta and that it's her last night in Boston. While Ellie is initially upset, she convinces Riley to stay and they kiss. An infected attacks them and Ellie manages to kill it, but both get bitten during the struggle. Tearfully, they decide to stay together and wait for the infection to take hold, but in the present, Ellie finds a sewing needle and begins to stitch up Joel's wound. So, this was so. not in the main game. This was DLC mm. to the original game. Now, for those of you non-gamers out there, DLC stands for downloadable content. It's content that oh. you can pay for added to the game you bought originally. It usually comes out a months or a year after the fact. Um, sometimes like an add-on supplement kind of thing, right? Yeah. Like okay. like this, like this, epi- like this podcast episode. Is it here, like a this... side quest? Is it like a side quest, or is it like you know? DLCs like can D- be side quests. They can they can add on um, like just like a weapon or something, or just extra story, or mm. it's an expansion pack that like expands the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, so sometimes the way it works. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna just to explain to people who don't know. Um, sometimes the way it works is that they have a time frame and a budget for how they have to do the game. Sometimes development can go a little long and they may not finish certain parts of the game in time, so they decide to cut it out altogether, unfinished, package the game and release it. And then if the game does well, they'll be like, well, you know, we were working on this story mode or this story mission or this weapon. We mm-hmm. couldn't finish it in time. Let's finish it, add it back in for some money. Dust DLC. Yeah, yeah. This this entire episode was DLC to the first game. So, and I'll be very honest, for me, it wasn't worth the money I paid for it. It wasn't that great. <laughs> I, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. This entire episode felt like a 20-minute storyline, a 20-minute flashback, stretched out to 60 minutes. And... Yeah. Ironically, even though I didn't like the Left Behind DLC for the first game, I still think that was better than this episode. Uh, because in that in that DLC, Ellie brings Joel to an abandoned mall, and she goes around trying to figure out how, like what to do to like you know fix him up and, and and get him some medicine and whatnot. And while she's in the abandoned mall in Colorado, um, she's trying to navigate infected and trying to kill the remaining hunters that wounded Joel. In this episode, it's just ninety five percent flashback, and yeah, eh, I just wasn't. I, I think this is the weakest episode. Uh, you could completely skip I, it and I, still I be do fine. Think that? Well, that's kind of true. I mean, it's it's not that it's not that um, the actors didn't do a fantastic job, and it's not that I didn't feel the pain near the end. Um, there, there, there's a. F- I do think it didn't need this. It didn't need to be 60 minutes like i do feel like you could have done this a whole episode in 30 minutes um and done something else um like you know when she comes in the mall and she's like oh i've got like five different things to show you that are going to be like wonderful this night and you're like oh my god like <laughs> you don't you don't need that many like we get it these these kids are these these kids are friends like you know, you get you get longing look number one, longing look number two, longing look number three, longing look number four, and you're like, okay, yeah, I get it. They're in love with each other. Like, um, yeah, you know, they did they did a great job, but it did it was it was it was funny that they spent so much time developing this relationship when, for example, we have nothing between Joel and his wife, very little between Joel and his daughter. Like that was done in in, in a very quick flashback. Um, uh, I you know it's it, it's odd that so much was developed for this this um, romantic relationship with Ellie that we haven't even heard of heard from before. You know, so it's, it's a bit a bit odd, don't you think? Uh, it's, uh, it's hey, look, it's whatever. I this could I mean, have I been guess flashbacks I... that could have taken like 10, 20 minutes, but a majority of the episode, in my personal opinion, should have been. Ellie trying to, uh, it should have been Ellie's episode, and it kind of is, but it should have been her struggling to survive in the mall, because in, once again, in the DLC that I played, Hmm. she's in a mall, an abandoned mall with Joel, and she's trying to fight off infected and the raiders slash hunters who came looking, so it should have been that. It's it's funny that you view it through the game lens of, like, what it should have been in the game lens. I view it on, like, what information I would have liked to know. Like, I think her life in the in 
in that military school dealing with classes, dealing with, with, with bully girls, dealing with authority, all of that stuff, I think would have been more interesting. Like, I want to know what her life is like. I want to know what life is like for the average person in the, in the post-apocalypse, which we don't, we haven't really seen yet. You know, we get little hints and glimmers, but everything is unusual, right? Like Joel is a, is a drug dealer and, and also doing all of these odd jobs. Um, and then we get, we get, uh, the life of like two people that that um, lived in isolation outside of everything else, and we don't we don't really know what day to day life is for people. So at the very beginning, I was very interested in in her school, how she relates to authorities, things like that, and then all of a sudden, it's two girls hanging in a mall, um, which. I mean, the premise is really is kind of ridiculous. Like none of those things would have been working after 20 years. <laughs> Certainly not the escalator. Certainly not the photo machine. Like so many of those things would have not have been working. But second, like I don't believe that they wouldn't have combed through there getting supplies um, or things that they could give to people as bribes in the uh, in the regular world. You know, it, it seems weird that all that stuff was left behind. And that no one in 20 years has gone into that mall to get the stuff. That also seemed um, unlikely. Also, that one clicker finds them <laughs> rather than, you know, a horde. You know, a lot, a lot of little stuff like that. Like, you know, I can get by, like, ridiculous premises. But, you know, if, if the story is good. And, the sto- you know, the story was good. But it just it lingered for so long. It's just so, so very odd. But, I, I, you know, I get it. I, also... And this is me being like an anal bastard, but like, isn't doesn't it contradict a lot of the stuff that's already happened in the show? Mm, what do you mean? Like, didn't 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 Ellie already like? There's a scene where like Ellie goes down beneath the earth at that shop and finds an infected, and then kind of is fascinated by him, as if she's never seen an infected before, and kind of like plays with him. Um. But here it's like no, she's she's totally seen an infected before, so that's not a thing, you know. Or, or when, when you know she was very, uh, uh, you know, this whole idea of like being infatuated with like weapons and violence and stuff like that, and she's actually, you know, gone through traumatic experiences with violence and has fought already before. You to know? be fair, like, that could, little, that could have been the like, second yeah. infected she's ever seen, and you know she. Yeah. She didn't let me, maybe last time she was so shocked that she somehow was not infected after that encounter that she just walked away. And that was that. Um, yeah. um, I mean, I do, I do enjoy, I do think about, you know, I do enjoy that, like, you know, in her mind, you know, this is, this is a, uh, like that ending where they parrot, parrot against Joel. Like this is a person that she lost and she had no power to save them. But in this, in Joel's situation, she has power to do something. She has power to take action. And, you know, I, you know, I like that juxtaposition. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, I don't know. It's just, um, there were so many things, so many paths that I thought would have been more interesting like even even her waiting until dawn or whatever with her friend um to change well that kind of goes against the the situation with the little boy like she knows what's going to happen to that little boy she sat with the her, her love and had it happen to her isn't it really weird that she would be naive with the little boy you know it's just a lot of little stuff like that like all these things that kind of contradict the episodes that have already happened huh that, that's, anyway, that's a good it's, point. It's, it's, I I don't want to say this felt like a bottle episode, but eh. I mean it is a bottle episode. Absolutely, a bottle episode is inexpensive. This seemed very expensive. This seemed like they threw some oh, money. You're right, at it. it was. That's that's very true. No, they <laughs> I, the inside of the episode they built that entire mall as a set. And it's like, couldn't you have gone to a mall? First of all, there's a million abandoned malls in America because malls are dying, and if, that you could have just gone to to the middle of of you know, uh, economically depressed Kansas and found an old <laughs> abandoned mall and it would have been, you wouldn't have even had to change anything, you know, but instead they like, they built that whole set rather than just going to a mall and, and messing it up and filming on location. 
<sighs> yeah, it's just like I said, it, it wasn't. Uh, and I'll and I'll be very honest. Uh, I'm still a little iffy on Bella Ramsey as Ellie, even now, seven episodes in. Eh. Really? I thought she did. I thought she did great. She's fine. Uh, I, I she's... thought she was the thought she was the best. I thought this was her strongest performance yet, and I thought she, without her acting and performance, the episode would have been uh, would have been complete would have just been complete waste. But. I think she did a great job. Eh, she's fine. My I'm not saying she's a bad actress. It's just, just something about her I can't put my finger on. It just uh, I don't. I can't. I can't escape the Leona Mormont and the pouty attitude from Game of Thrones. I I, yeah. I just can't escape it. But eh, she's fine. <clears throat> also, 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 was was that like a one a one or two story mall in a, in a city? <laughs> like, were they are they in Boston? And there's like a one or two story like mall. Like in, within the city limits, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> okay, but uh, no, I would say uh, this is the weakest episode so far, simply because this did not need to be stretched out as long as it did. And you're 110 percent correct. I would have liked to have seen what happened after the fact, after she woke up at dawn and she found out she was not infected, she was immune, right. and how she came across the fireflies and all that stuff, and, and so on and so forth. What's the one observation you had about uh, Ellie that you had about Joel and Tommy? Oh, no. Well, I felt like I talked about this too much last time, but but it's funny that all of the, all of the protagonists that we've met so far, like... I mean, they're, they all, they're all in love with black women. And so it's Ellie too. You know, like, it's just like, I was making this big joke. Like he runs into his brother and it's like, oh, you've, you fall in love with, the, you're, you're becoming me, including having, having gotten together with a black woman. And then it turns out Ellie, Ellie is, is, uh, as well. But, um, it's funny. It's funny that you have this like view of looking at it from, from, reading uh from playing the game and and how that affects you well i i i look at it you know very differently yeah that's what that's why like, that's why i wanted to you know see if you like the episode or not but you're you're on the same boat as me it's it was a whatever episode yeah no it, it was whatever it was certainly not bad it was certainly not bad it i i i think you're right that it was probably the weakest so far and it's i think the main problem was that they just didn't have enough to do for the length of the episode. The the beginning and the ending were the best parts where we got to see Ellie's life and then at the end where there's actually some action and some real emotion. Like when you actually get to the point where they finally kiss and you're like, "Yes, finally." You know, and you and you find and then they and then they're dying and ah, oh, this emotion and then like her with Joel um you know, they 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 pushed all this like emotion and and all at the end and then it's just but in the middle um, it's just it's just two kids playing in a mall. <laughs> it's just, it's just that's it. So uh, yeah, you know, like now that I think about fine. it, like episode three did a way better job with Bill and Frank, and and I felt the time spent with those guys were was more deserved. It was it was done way better. Maybe it's because I've seen this episode done before, but better with episode three. I don't know. I just for some mm. reason I. Combined with the fact that the DLC was very mediocre, and even they did it kind of better. I don't know. For me, episode seven was the weakest. The funny thing is, I know Ben Shapiro must be like fucking punching the air right now in anger because it's another it's another uh, LGBTQ episode with no zombies. He must. Be- also, it's just it's just very realistic that that um, you know if you if if you're not get like. So everybody, everybody exists on a, a kind of sexuality spectrum, right? But um, if you're not given, let's say, let's say either one of those characters, you know, if if boys were around, would have preferred boys. Boys aren't around, so they, they, you know, they they're they're going to. Everybody has like romantic feelings that they need to, um, you know, vent towards towards a person, you know, like so. That's just going to happen if there's if there's no. Um, if there's no boys around anyway, you know, so it doesn't, doesn't matter though, though you tell me that you've spoiled for me that, that Ellie is, is, um, is gay and it doesn't, then she's going to, when given options, she, she chooses women. So it doesn't, that doesn't matter, but like, you know, but, um, I don't think it would be unrealistic for two girls in an apocalypse who are or two boys in an apocalypse who are at like an all boys or all girls school to find romance with each other 
you know, just because, you know, there's, there's no one else around. <laughs> what, what are you going to do? <laughs> so, you know, so I understand that the, the anti SGW Ben Shapiro types are going to complain no matter what, but it's like, yeah, it's, it's, that's probably the most realistic part of the episode. Like an abandoned mall that hasn't been cleared out for supplies in the middle of a city that they can hook power up to and all of these items 20 years on are still functioning. That's not realistic. But like two girls, two girls being into each other. Yeah. In close quarters. Why? Why not? That's pretty realistic. Ironically, it's more acceptable you know? for like, you know, women to be into each other than it is for men. I guess, you know, because... Well, oh, there, there's there's an old like um, uh, this is this is something that's always been commented on that uh, like in the Bible, for example, only male homosexuality is is actually um, uh, forbidden. Like nothing's ever said about female homosexuality, you know. So it's very it's very kind of funny how people people are with that, but. I, uh, I I saw a comment from someone saying how the LGBTQ people would ruin everything because in a, in, a, in an apocalypse isn't the goal to make more people and doesn't the LGBTQ relationships kind of hinder that in a sense? I thought that was a little silly, but okay. Though though it seems like in this apocalypse they're not really worried about not enough people. Yeah, that's true. I understand in most apocalypses, you know, they almost feel like they have too many. They always talk about too many mouths mm-hmm. to feed and things like that. So they don't they don't seem to be worried about um, the human race dying out. Uh, you know, they seem like they have plenty of people. They just don't have enough like food and supplies. So it's a different different type of apocalypse, yeah. In The Walking Dead, the creator of The Walking Dead, after every comic chapter he released, he would answer some fan questions. And apparently in The Walking Dead world, I think, was it Nebraska or one of the northern states, Montana or North Dakota, uh, apparently there's only two people living in one of those like big northern states in the United States um, in The Walking Dead mm. universe. So... Like, you would think, like, a lack of people would be a huge issue, but it's especially how, like, these are those, these are those, like, fast, fast infected. These are, like, the Dawn of the Dead at the mall yeah. ones. And, uh, and they're, they're super zombies, like you'd find in Left 4 Dead, the video game. So, like, you'd think the population would be devastatedly fucked. Like, they would be destroyed. But, no, you're right. There's, a uh, quite a few, quite a few amount of people. Yeah, yeah. Now... Uh, yeah, it's the Walking Dead universe, right? All dead people rise again. That's that's even much worse than like getting infected, kind of, kind of. Uh, yeah, but they but but they kind know. of like speed walk. They don't run. They don't like you know. They don't go crazy at you and like just flare the fl- Yeah, but you can never you can never have a regular society because like people are gonna die of old age or accidents, and then they're gonna become a zombie. And you're like, oh god, and you're gonna have another breakout. You know, so that's true. It's a uh, it's versus like whatever rage zombies where it's it's an infection and you can just as long as you kill off all the infected you're you're you win mm-hmm. you know so mm, but uh mm, no i like the bill know. and frank episode quite a bit I, I i felt that worked a bit more than this one that one didn't seem like they were trying well, to more s- more happened more happened yes. in the bill and frank episode mm-hmm. you know they actually covered like 20 year period and so you had these jumps where they're doing new things making friends planting strawberries you know <laughs> fighting off invaders like this like nothing nothing happened like it like it was the same thing over and over again right like it's it's ellie doing something that a regular kid would do all the time and doesn't think about as wondrous but it's her doing it and feeling a sense of wonder mm. you know and then over again and then over again while longingly looking at her love you know so it, you know, we only needed half the time. Could have spent the other the other time like knowing about her life in the QZ and and waiting for Dawn with the girl and figuring out how Ellie got to the fireflies yeah. and Marlene and all of that. So yeah, no. Uh, at, at the risk of uh, repeating it over and over again, that's pretty much all I have to say on the episode. Guys, thank you so much for joining us on this add-on DLC for episode seven. We will see you all next time for the penultimate episode and the final episode. Have a good one.